Hey guys, it's me, Johnny Crimson 2000 here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore for the PlayStation 2. So, this game was uh, released for the PlayStation 2 in the year 2000. This was actually released a month before Dead or Alive 3 was released for the, uh, for the Xbox. This was before, um, I guess Tecmo had an exclusive deal with with Microsoft to release their stuff onto the, you know, exclusively for the for the Xbox. So this was kind of like a weird thing, especially back in the day. I found this, you know, I found out that this game was released for the PlayStation 2, and at first I was just like, wait a minute. I thought I thought they had an exclusive deal with Microsoft, and it wasn't later, uh, it wasn't until a little bit later that I found out that this actually came out almost like a month before <laughs> Dead or Alive 3. So they barely got this game out there for the PlayStation 2 just in time. So if you didn't have, uh, I guess they were trying to, you know, ride the coattails of Dead or Alive 3's popularity. Like if you didn't have Dead or Alive, you know, if you if you didn't get the Xbox and got Dead or Alive 3, but you were still a Dead or Alive fan, well, hey, you know, if you got a PlayStation 2, you're still luck. You're you're still in luck because you got Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. Now I mentioned in my previous video, my Let's Play of Dead or Alive 2, that Itagaki uh, Tomonobu Itagaki, the producer and director of the Dead or Alive series, was unhappy with the way the Dead or Alive 2 turned out. Um, I explained why in that Let's Play, but essentially this was the the version, I guess, that he intended to make all along. Now the reason why I am doing two different Let's Plays of Dead or Alive 2 and Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore is that I kind of see this as being it's, this is sort of like the same case that was with the PlayStation version of Dead or Alive 1 as opposed to the Sega Saturn version of Dead or Alive 1, where the PlayStation version just had more stuff to it, and I think it warranted a uh, separate playthrough. It's the same case here, though a little bit less pronounced. Now, this thing added a whole lot of stuff. Now, one of the things that you'll notice right away, um, if, if I'm not talking too loudly here, is that this game... Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, although in my opinion it's unfortunate, is that this game actually added an English voiceover. <laughs> it's like an English uh, voice cast to this game. So whereas before and every game after this... Oh lord, <laughs> hearing Kasumi talk in English just makes me giggle. <laughs> so, unlike every game... Well, all two games before this one, and every game at... Well, three games... Dead or Alive 1, Dead or Alive 1 for the PlayStation, and Dead or Alive 2. And every game after this, um, except for Dead or Alive 5, this Dead or Alive, you know, had always been in Japanese. It, it's sort of like, the, you know, Street Fighter. You know, it wasn't until Street Fighter 4 where we got the opportunity to have English voiceovers, and then we were given the option, and then we regretted it as soon as we we, we, we had it. This was sort of the same thing here. It's it's very strange. This game had was given a English voiceover, and it's just very, very funny. Like, none of the, the... The voice acting... I'm not the type that usually complains. You know, I'm not like an anime person that watches anime all the time and always complains about, oh my god, they ruined the characters by having them talk in English. I'm, I'm usually not that kind of a person. I'm not that guy. But in this game, it's really pronounced. The voiceover work is really, really bad. And you can definitely tell that they didn't really put that much time into sort of giving these, these characters the right treatment that they deserve. They just don't sound right in English, in my opinion. But uh, if that was... I don't know if that was ever something that was a problem in the original Dead or Alive 2, but apparently it's been quote-unquote fixed in this version. So, you may be wondering, well, what are the differences here in Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore besides just being on the PlayStation 2? And really, there's a couple things that may, you know, may spark your interest. Though, I'll be honest, if you already have it for the Dreamcast and you're not that much of a Dead or Alive fan, or if you're not that much of a hardcore fighting game fan like I am, then you may, uh, you know, this may not persuade you to get this version if you already have it for the Dreamcast. There are some notable changes between this version and the version that I played before for the, Dead for the Sega Dreamcast, which was the original version. One, uh, I already talked about the English voices, they're, they're very funny, and, um, uh, and uh, yes, we are going with Helena here. Oh, Helena. Honestly, Helena is probably one of my favorite Dead or Alive girls. I have to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. I, always th I, I thought she's cute. <laughs> oh, Lord. What am I saying? This is going to be a good match. <laughs> oh, my God. They're talking in English. They sound so horrible. Um, 
so one of the things that the I'm just going to list off some of the things that you may or may not notice the difference between this game and, and the original version for the Dreamcast. Now, obviously, the graphics have seen a bit of an improvement. They're not that big. They're not going to look like Dead or Alive 3 did for the Xbox or not even nowhere near Dead or Alive um, Ultimate for the for the Xbox, which, in my opinion, is one of the best looking games of the of this era of this generation. But it is a noticeable difference. The quality is a bit, you know, it is a bit better. Now, something that may interest some of you techies out there, if you, if this sort of is your thing, this game does run faster at 60 frames per second instead of the 30 frames per second where um, that the Dreamcast version played. Again, a very small thing. You wouldn't really notice it unless I told you, honestly, in my opinion. At least not with me, you know. I guess it does run smoother, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe for if you're a really serious player and this may or may not throw off some of your combos, maybe that would make a difference. But honestly, for me, it's it's the same game. Um, there are eight new stages in this game. There is a CG gallery section. There are special moves that I actually didn't know until... Hello, Elena. Um, it's a very nice dress. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, there are some special moves I didn't know of. So you're not going to see them in this playthrough, unfortunately. But there are apparently this version includes some special moves that each character can do that are actually not like you have to find them somewhere. I don't know if they're. I don't think um, from what I read they're not in the instruction manual or I don't. I don't even think that they're in the training mode. But apparently every character has special moves that they can for, uh, that they can perform in this uh, in this version that were added to this version specifically. I can't tell you. I don't know any of them. Uh, I found that out when I was doing research to kind of tell you guys what the differences are uh, in this game. So if you know of any, then leave a comment. Let everybody know. Like, how do you pull off these moves? Supposed moves. Um, now, this is another thing that I, you know, I don't know if you would even notice unless I told you. Apparently, this game was going for a less anime look, which I never really understood because they still look rather anime-ish. Um... I guess Iragaki was going for a more realistic, I guess, look to this game, and I guess one of the things that he wanted was a less anime look to the whole game. Honestly, the only thing that I can notice off the top of my head, like just looking at this footage here, is just the character por portraits. Maybe they have like smaller eyes. I'm not exactly sure. But that's apparently something that was changed in this version as well. And uh, probably the biggest change that this game, or this version of the game had was the inclusion of a lot more uh, outfits. Which, unfortunately, I don't go back to playing this game all that much, so I haven't unlocked many costumes for these characters. At least not on this save file, so you're not going to see any. But it's sort of the same thing with the PlayStation version, where they're really, you know, it, it's outfits. So they're really not that big of a deal if you're in, you know, unless you're a 100% person or you want to see different costumes and things like that, then yeah, that's a bit impressive, but other than that, it's basically just costumes that were added to this game. Other than that, really, this game is pretty much the same as the Dreamcast version, except it just runs smoother and the graphics are a little bit better. <laughs> and of course, they do have the horrible, horrible English voices. Let's just listen, shall we? It can save someone's life. I see. I can buy that. Oh, that sounds so horrible. <laughs> like I said, guys, I'm not usually the kind of person that judges hardcore the voice acting in games because I just think that's... I don't know. It, it seems like a very nitpicky thing to, to talk about, just the voice acting. But this game, it, it, it just... Maybe it's just the fact that I'm just not used to hearing the Dead or Alive characters talk in English. That, plus the fact that the voice actors that they choose just... They sounded like they weren't even trying. <laughs> I don't know, maybe just Itagaki isn't as good as a, as a director as he thinks he is. Which I mentioned before in uh, my previous video, I talked about how he's sort of obsessed with the Dead or Alive girls. He claims that they are... Oh, this is... Oh, listen to Ayane. She's so bad in this game. Who knows? You. You killed my mother. Get ready. She's so bad. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, I talked about how Itagaki is um, sort of obsessed with the character, with the girls of Dead or Alive. Like he treats them very, you know, I I, I don't know. It always creeps me out because he claims that he treats them like they were his daughters, but then he makes it an effort to include like a gajillion and one outfits for these characters, or for these girls specifically, where half of them are them in bikinis and stuff. So 
very strange man indeed, and I barely won this match against Ayane. One thing that I ha I didn't mention before in my Dead or Alive 2 for the Dreamcast playthrough is that I absolutely love, like, love, 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 love the soundtrack for this game. This is probably my favorite sound. Oh, this is funny. Hold up. God, this guy is so bad. Is my is my. Delusion. He's so monotone, like it's... Good lord, where do they find these guys? Um, but yeah, uh, as I was saying, this is probably my favorite soundtrack of the entire Dead or Alive series. It's honestly, it's one of my favorite soundtracks from any fighting game ever. The, the soundtrack to the Dead or Alive 2 is just, in my opinion, amazing. And I love pretty much every, every character has... I, I love the song. This is definitely on my in, on my iPod, and I definitely go back to listen to it every now and then. And it's only going to get better once we go into Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, which I will explain once we get to that game. But as you guys can see, I whooped Tengu's ass because he's a punk, and he's a sucker. And unlike my Ayane playthrough in the original Dreamcast, it didn't take me three or four turns to uh, actually beat him. One thing I will say about this game, unfortunately, is that the, the endings really aren't that great. We saw the Ayane's ending in the original one in my last Let's Play for the Dreamcast version, and we see this one, it's just pretty much just the same thing. It's basically just them standing in this, in the final stage here, and just kind of looking around. Honestly, it really doesn't get any better than this. It wouldn't be until Dead or Alive 3 where the endings really, really got really good, um, where we actually got actual CG cutscenes and things like that. But up until now, this game, if there's one thing that I really don't like, it is the endings. They're just not that great, really. Um, I'm trying to remember if Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate had any sort of real endings, quote-unquote. And I can't really think off the top of my head if they do. I want to say that they do, but I cannot remember. So, <laughs> we will see once we get to it, but I want to say that they don't. Um... Yeah, I, I want to say that they don't, because Dead or Alive Ultimate is based off of Dead or Alive 2, which, it, as you guys uh, saw here, doesn't really have endings. So anyway, guys, that's it for Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. Um, again, the, the changes, they're really not that great. If you already have the version on the Dreamcast, I really don't see why you would want to get this version, unfortunately. If you have a Dreamcast and a PlayStation 2 and you've never gotten this game, then yeah, I think that you, you should get this version. It's the more complete version. And yeah, the English voices are pretty bad, but fortunately you can turn them back to the original Japanese, which is a plus. It would be it would definitely, you know, be bad if you couldn't. Because they're so bad. So bad. So anyway guys, that's it for me. Um this has been Johnny Crimson two thousand and I will see you in my next video. Alright, peace out. As always, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to get more stuff from me. In the meantime, if you like my videos, be sure to find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Raptor, and ScrewAttack.com to see the other gaming-related content that I upload. Info is in the description. Who knows? Maybe you'll like my stuff. Maybe? Maybe?